YOLO You only live once 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 YOLO you only live one. Birds building on our tour. Second tallest here in the city. Trump International Hotel and Tower. Completed by architect Adrian Smith back in 2009. Standing at 1,362 feet tall. Home to 472 condominiums. A five-star restaurant in a five-star hotel. Quick question. What is the name of the tallest building in the world? What's the name of it? Burj Khalifa. Burj Khalifa is correct, kid. The building stands at 2,722 feet tall. You look to the top of Trump Towers, stack another Trump Towers on top of it. It's gonna equal the same height of the Burj Khalifa. Architect Adrian Smith designed both of the buildings. And I mentioned Trump Towers was home to about 472 condominiums. Penthouse here sold a year and a half ago for about $18 million. Told family in the suburbs, it's their second home. The black box structure, AMA Plaza, formerly known as the IBM building, completed by a German architect back in 1971. His name, Mies van der Rohe. The building is completed in his international style of architecture, believing there should be zero ornament tastes alongside his buildings. His philosophy, less is more. You have the cameras out in front of us, two most photographed buildings in Chicago, Marina City, or known by their nicknames, the corn cobs of the Midwest. Completed by a student of Mies van der Rohe, his name Bertrand Goldberg. He did not agree with that less is more philosophy, believing since there are no right angles in nature, there should be none in architecture. We're not gonna find any right angles in the two buildings here. When you walk into your apartment here, ladies and gentlemen, it is extremely narrow. Widens as you walk throughout the apartment, shaped sort of like a piece of pie or pizza. Each floor connected to a central stem. Think of petals on a flower. When the buildings first opened, they were thought to be a city within a city, having their own ice skating rink, bowling alley, a movie theater, which has been converted into the House of Blues, grocery store, even the Prada Marina. Ladies and gentlemen, you've ever seen the films, The Blues Brothers, and Steve McQueen's last film, The Hunter. They were filmed there. That 1979 Pontiac was driven off of the 17th floor into the Chicago River. Speaking of the river, I know a lot of people typically tend to think that it is green due to the fact that we died on St. Patrick's Day. This is not the case. The Chicago River is green because this is a clay-based river and it mixes with the lake water and algae. When dyeing the river green on St. Patrick's Day, we use 40 pounds of vegetable dye. It turns the river a bright kelly green. Color of the dye happens to be orange, lasts for about three or four days. Also by 2030, we plan to be able to swim in the river again. We made huge strides with it. It used to be really, 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 really dirty. Today, it is just really dirty. <laughs> Reed Murdoch Center is to our right, completed by George Nimitz back in 1914. The building it is sheathed in that red, red brick at the top, you're going to find some terracotta ornament takes the wheat. If you are looking at the building completely, it does look asymmetrical. It's because they needed to knock out one of the west side bays here to make room for the expansion of the LaSalle Street Bridge. The building, it was originally a warehouse, now home to two restaurants, condominium office space, Whirlpool, and Encyclopedia Britannica. But if there are any engineers on board, the next building is an engineering masterpiece. 300 North LaSalle, completed by Begot and Chilton back in 2009. And this is a LEED certified building. LEED stands for Leadership and Energy and Environmental Design. The building, it holds a platinum rating. That is the highest award that the building can achieve. Basically like winning an Academy Award for a building. It also has a green roof which mitigates rainfall, has plants, trees, and vegetations. Chicago has more green buildings than any other city in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't miss the massive structure after the bridge. This is our merchandise mark, completed back in 1931, 
by Graham Anderson Pope's and White. And the building is designed in the Art Deco style of architecture. Art Deco buildings typically have the geometrical ornamentations, vertical lines working your eyes up, and setbacks at the top. This was the largest concrete structure in the world when it opened. So it's only second to what building? The Pentagon is correct, sir. You are good at useless information. The building sits on five city blocks. It is 4.25 million square feet of space. Up into the year 1996, the building had its own zip code, 60654. The building, it sold to the Kennedy family back in 1945 for about $13 million in back taxes. In the year 1998, the Kennedy family sold the building for $575 million. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is still true, Mary and Kennedy. Stand off into the right side of the boat. They decide to keep the land here. We'll point and they're developing it at the moment having wolf point east and west already completed wolf point east 650 feet tall wolf point west 570 feet tall salesforce will be the last of the three buildings the only commercial of the three at 750 feet tall also keep in mind that wind has picked up you have on a cap make sure it's set it down i was given a tour last week there was a guy on my boat with a yankees cap on and it flew into the river no one cared Directly to our right, River Point, opened five years ago in 2017. Another LEED certified building made of about 55% recycled materials. But notice the building here that looks as though it's been built upside down. 150 North Riverside, completed by Gush, has to be built that way. It's built over active switching tracks. To give you an idea as to how narrow the base of that building is, it is about 40 feet wide, as wide as the boat that we are on here today. At the top of the building, they have what is known as a mass damper system. Four tanks containing about 160,000 gallons of water. To help with the swing of the building when it wants to be blown by the wind, you see the building is built like a tuning fork. So when it wants to be blown east by the wind, 160,000 gallons of water goes to the west end of the building. All computer automated. 333 West Wacker Drive is to our right and the building was voted the most beautiful building alongside the Chicago River. Notice how the building bends with the natural bend of the river. That is known as contextualism, when the building adapts to the natural side of topography that it is on. But if you've ever seen the film, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and you remember the scene when Ferris Bueller's dad looks down to the parade from his office building, he's doing it from 333 West Wacker Drive here. The parade scene was shot a few blocks out of here on State Street, that great street. Now this is Wacker Drive, ladies and gentlemen. Who's driven on Wacker Drive? Who's gotten lost on Wacker Drive? It's a rite of passage. We've got an upper Wacker Drive, you have a lower Wacker Drive, and you've got a lower, lower Wacker Drive. For all of those levels, you've got north, south, east, west Wacker Drive. GPS will not let you, will not let you know what level you're on. Catch a cab. Folks here in the green shirts at eye level, the nature staff here in the city of Chicago, teaching the folks alongside the river how to fish from 10 to 4 p.m. every weekend. You're gonna find over, how's it going? You're gonna find over 70 different species in the Chicago River, more catch and release. <laughs> now that bay is building 225 West Wacker Drive. Look to its top. You're going to notice it has a bridge connecting the east and the west side of it, paying homage to our 37 Bascule Trunnion bridges here in the city of Chicago. Bascule basically translates into seesaw in French. You see our bridges, they are very well balanced, weighing about 1,000 ton, only take 108 horsepower to open. Our bridges, they do open every Wednesday and Saturday mornings in May and October to let the sailboats through. Chicago, we have more opening bridges than any other city in the United States. Pittsburgh may have more bridges than us, but they do not all open. Quality over quantity. There is one city in the world that does have more opening bridges in Chicago. Can you name it? Not Venice, but it is in Europe. Amsterdam is correct. They've got 101 opening bridges in Amsterdam. At eye level in front of us, we've got the theater section of the Riverwalk. On a beautiful day, you're going to see it filled with people just watching the boats and the days go by.
They'll even pull a bar to appear at night and have a free concert. We've got two more buildings after the bridge. The first was that Wacker building. Completed by Halliburton Group back in 1924, it's one of the first buildings to utilize the setback. The glass structure east of it, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about it. 111 West Wacker Drive was supposed to be 90 stories. It did not happen due to the recession in the mid-2000s. It said structurally unfinished alongside this river for about five years. It got finished in 2012. <laughs> How's it going? By a different architecture firm related Midwest. We've been on this boat for about 10 minutes. But can you notice people love to wave at you when you're on a boat? No one ever waves at me when I'm sitting in my car. It is a different hand signal. Now to our right, we've got one of my personal favorites, ladies and gentlemen, 77 West Wacker Drive. Looking to its top, this is Santa Fe homage to Giano's Campanale on top of the Florence Cathedral, resembling a bell tower. And that structure east of it, 55 West Wacker Drive, ladies and gentlemen, I call it the hashtag building. Notice the next building here. It has these silver bars inserted into its windows. Architecturally, these are known as mullions. They help reflect some light to the building. 35 West Wacker Drive, completed by Kevin Roche and John Dinkaloo back in 1992. And the building is home to the Leo Burnett Advertising Agency. Same agency who have come up with Snap, Crackle, Pop, Ronald McDonald, Tony the Tiger, the Pillsbury Doughboy, and my personal favorite, the Meow Mix Jingle. Look directly in front of the boat here. Find that building with the green base and the gold cap. That's the Carbon and Carbide building, home to the Pendry Hotel. Completed by the Burnham Brothers back in 1928, it is set to resemble a champagne bottle. They got their inspiration during a New Year's Eve party. It was built during the Prohibition. The top of that building is clad in 24 karat gold. Clearing the bridge, we're gonna find the Jewelers building to our right, built during the gangster era here in the city of Chicago. Jewelers had to drive their cars into the building on top of an elevator just so they wouldn't get mugged. That temple-like structure at its top, that is known as a Belvedere. In that Belvedere in the mid-20s and the early 30s, it held a speakeasy known as the Stratosphere Lounge. In front of the boat to the right of the London, London House, we've got a skinny white skyscraper, Mather Tower, and it was the tallest building in the world for two weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just about where we started this tour at the base of the London Guarantee and Accents Building, completed by architect Alfred L. Schuller back in 1923. But the building is not as important as the piece of land that it's on, because if you walk around its base, you're gonna find brass inserts in the pavement, letting you know it's where our first military base was located, Fort Dearborn. Why do we choose this specific piece of land? You look in front of us, you will find the DuSable Bridge. 10 years ago, this was known as the Michigan Avenue Bridge. This is once where the lake met the river. So it's pretty convenient for us to have a first military base located here. Got the name changed 10 years ago in honor of our first non-Native American citizen, Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable, a Haitian man who came to the city looking to establish a fur trading business. Take your cameras out, join me off into the left. We're gonna get a unique photo opportunity. Three iconic buildings in one shot. We're gonna get the Wrigley Building, the Hotel Intercontinental, and the Chicago Tribune all in one shot, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're looking back at the Chicago Tribune, noticing a resemblance to the burning of Notre Dame, it's because they're both done in that neo-Gothic style of architecture, noticing the flying buttresses at the top there. Completed back in 1924 by Raymond Hood and John Mead Howe, part of a contest to see who built the most beautiful office building. Over 250 entries from many different countries. The Tribune building won. The newspaper, they left the building about three years ago. It's been converted into condominiums, starting out at about $7 million. About three, three weeks ago, they opened up a brand new exhibit at the base of the building known as the Museum of Ice Cream. Talk more about that later. Join me off into the right. You're gonna find the Hyde Regency, largest hotel here in the city of Chicago, home to about 2,019 rooms. But if you begin to look behind it, you're gonna find this tall white skyscraper with black vertical lines. That's the Aeon Center, fourth tallest building here in the city of Chicago. Get this, 
the building was originally clad in Italian white to rubber marble. Same marble Michelangelo used on his David. He clasped the building about a half inch thick, too thin, did not survive a few of Chicago's harsh winters. The marble, it began to crack, and we feared that it began to fall on people's heads, so we went up there and replaced it with North Carolina granite. And that project costed an estimated $80 million. Ladies and gentlemen, that just goes to show you can't take marble for granted. I don't typically do that joke, but today I was feeling bolder. Only 70 minutes left. Off and to all right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, finding the skyscraper with the white undulating patios, that taco towers, and this was the tallest building in the world, designed by a female architect, designed by Chicago native, Jeannie Gang. The building was completed back in 2009 in those white undulating patios, it gives the building that water rippling effect alongside of it. At its base, it is home to the Radisson Blue Hotel, upper floors of condominiums. The penthouse of Aqua Towers was once owned by my ex fiance Lady Gaga. <laughs> Clearing the bridge, we're gonna find one of the newest neighborhoods here in the city of Chicago, the Lakeshore East Community. You would have visited us 25 to 30 years ago. You'd be teeing off. This is a nine hole golf course. Swiss Hotel is right after the bridge, completed by architect Harry Weiss. He loved the maritime theme, ladies and gentlemen. He loved to sail, designing the building to look like the bow of a ship. But you can't miss the next building. It's just been completed with a beautiful turquoise glass. This is known as the St. Regis. It has taken the place of the third tallest building here in the city of Chicago. It is my new favorite building here in the city. It is once again designed by Chicago native, Jeannie Gang. She's outdone herself for the tallest building in the world, designed by a female architect. Home to Hotel St. Regis and also condominiums. Why do you want to live in the same building as a hotel? Room service. Ladies and gentlemen, look up. They've taken out the 81st to 83rd floor. They've left it completely open. This is now what is known as a blow-through floor. They were allowing the wind to blow through that floor to alleviate the wind stress in the tallest stack so it doesn't sway so much. You look one step down to its left at the second tallest stack. Penthouse is just sold for $20 million. Building to its right, still under construction, will be a private school, <laughs> Gyms Academy, K through 12. Tuition for your kindergarten will run you about 45 grand a year. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been cruising on this Chicago River for about 20 minutes now. So I have to let you know, it's one of the only bodies of water to have its direction of flow be reversed. You see the river used to flow east, the river we're heading now into Lake Michigan, it now flows west. Why do we change this? Well, back in the 1800s, we were polluting this river very poorly. We were the meat stocking capital of the world, just to throw something out there. You see, we were throwing everything into the river. Meat carcasses, waste, paint, sewage, jury summons. Whatever we could find, it was going into the river. I mentioned that it flowed east into Lake Michigan. This was and still is our source of drinking water. We were basically poisoning ourselves. About 10% of our population was dying from typhoid fever and cholera. So Chicago, we would decide to do something about it. And no, we did not decide to stop polluting it. We decided to make it someone else's problem. So we built the canal, made the sanitary and ship canal. We dug for about 26 miles, 37 feet deep. On average, this river, it is 22 feet deep. In the year 1890, we dammed off the north and the south branch of the Chicago River, and we began digging. After 10 years of digging, we moved more dirt than the Panama Canal. On the night of January 2nd, 1900, we'd open up that south branch's dam. Very quietly, I might add, and the process worked. We forever reversed the flow of the river. It began to flow south into the Des Plaines River, into the Illinois, into the Mississippi, forever out to the Gulf of Mexico. Chicago, we were happy about this. Well, it's so interesting to me, and it, it's, it's got this whole boat vibrating. And it feels like you're all sitting in a massage chair. 
ladies and gentlemen, from Lake Michigan, one of the five great lakes, naming them here on Ontario, Michigan, Erie Superior. About 92% of the lake did freeze. Ladies and gentlemen, turn around and look at the city of Chicago. You will not find a, beauty, a city as beautiful as Chicago architecturally, in my opinion. Also, since we move further away from the city, look back at the St. Regis, noticing that blow through floor and how unique it looks in comparison to the, to the rest of the building. It's mind bending. Now, at eye level, ladies and gentlemen, beyond the trees here, behind the trees, you're going to find the Jardine Filtration Plant, named after our first chief water engineer, James W. Jardine. Every day here in Chicago, we filter about 1 billion gallons of water for a population of about 2.7 million people in our 270 surrounding suburban neighborhoods, giving us a total population of about 10 million people in the Chicago land area. John G. said, home to over 32,500 animals, over 1,500 species, ladies and gentlemen. If you have the time, visit the planetarium or the set of ladies and gentlemen. Pretty cool things to visit and see here in the city. Visit one of our museums. You can spend a whole day there. Also, the Museum of Science and Industry. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later. As we pass the planetarium, you can get a glimpse of it. Ladies and gentlemen, beyond the trees, you're going to find a stadium. It has Roman columns. Looks as though a flying saucer landed alongside our lakefront. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Soldier Field. Since 1971, Soldier Field has been home to our 1985 Super Bowl winners, the Chicago Bears. Seems just like yesterday. We are 1 0 after tomorrow, 2 0. On our road to 22-23 Super Bowl champions. He heard it here first. 